main event of the evening. Brought to you by Boost Mobile's all new Trinket Plan. A brand new way to mobile. 28 year old Bandejas against 26 year old Pettis Bandejas. Four inches taller, but look at the reach, Big John. Almost virtually identical. That's, you know, when you look at that, it's it's the length of his arms that you really have to worry about. Sergio's got a wider back, doesn't matter. Does not matter, so they will fight for a shot. And a shot at bantamweight goal. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA live on Paramount Network from Mohegan Sun Arena. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Three five minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation Chairman James Gessner. Chief of Mohegan Tribe, Lynn Malerba, supervising at Cape Side Director Mike Mazzulli. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner. At five foot six, weighing in 134.7 pounds, just off the first round submission victory in his Bellator debut. He enters tonight with 19 professional victories, five defeats. Fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Sergio Pettis. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5'10", weighing in 135.4 pounds with the momentum from his two consecutive knockout victories tonight. He stands with 13 wins, three losses from Brick, New Jersey. He fights out of Coconut Creek, Florida, introducing Ricky Bandeja. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Brian Miner. Ricky, let me have you. Sergio, let me have you. Gentlemen, we're over the rules in the back. Protect yourselves at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck to you both. Ricky Van Dejas, Sergio Pettis, our main event of the evening. Bellator is back. Ricky, you ready? Sergio, you ready? Here we go! Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Geico. Van Dejas in the red gloves, Pettis in the blue gloves. American top team against Team Rufus Sport. What a matchup of great fighters, great trainers, great camps, and there is a lot on the line. We had talked right before the fight had started about the distance and the range as far as the reach wasn't that significant. But Ricky fights long, whereas Pettis doesn't fight as long. So that's, I think that's gonna be what the difference is. When I was pointing out he needs to fight in a long, stay long, this is what I was talking about. See how he's using those side kicks? Sergio has fought about half his fights at 125, half at 135. Obviously, a bantamweight again tonight here inside the Bellator cage. But John, he's got a sneaky way of getting inside. And to Josh's point, that's what Sergio is going to look to do to counter that reach of Ricky Bandejas. Well, if you're looking right now, Ricky Bandejas is a taller fighter, but Sergio is fighting tall. Ricky is actually squatting down, which is bringing him down right in the, in the line with Sergio. So as far as I'm seeing right now, Sergio's doing exactly what he needs to do in putting Ricky's back towards that cage, and he's the one controlling this distance game. And it just, oh, by the way, Ricky Bandejas is kind of built like Anthony Pettis. And I have a feeling that Sergio and Anthony have trained against each other, and so Sergio's worked his way inside. Maybe got beat up by his big brother once in a while, but he's worked it as well. Pettis has always been good with his tight boxing, getting into range, and doing damage. And watch out for body shots. Look, at Sergio Pettis has been in the cage with some of the best fighters in the world in the weight categories that he competes in. Yes. So. Ricky Bandeos is a great fighter, but Sergio's already been in with plenty of guys that do what Ricky does. It's just a matter of taking your time. You don't have to win every second of the fight. You just need to go out and do the things that you do well, wait for your moment, and when your moment comes, take advantage of it. Guys like Henry Cejudo and Joseph Benavides come to mind. Pretty good fighters right not there. Not bad, not bad. Good chance, man. Good chance. Yeah, 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 good chance.
if Ricky's just going to make this a straight stand-up fight, it's not going to work. He's got to change it up a little bit. He's got to make it a little bit grimy, dirty, whatever you want to call it. He's got to get in that clinch. He's got to do something that Pettis is not familiar with. And what he's doing right now is not working. One of the things I'm seeing that we, both of us have noticed with Ricky, he's got a bad habit of raising his chin. And he's doing that same thing right now. And Sergio's going to see it. If he continues to throw and raise his chin, Eventually, Sergio is going to be able to touch that chin, and it's going to—it can be lights out. And you guys talk to him about it, and, and Ricky knows it's something he needs to continue to work on. Sergio had a nice Superman punch a moment ago. Yes, Ricky yes. Bandejas should Rick. sit down and watch tape of Pat Kern and where Pat Kern's chin was always at when he fought. You yes, talk about yes, a guy that puts his chin in the proper doing. position. That, that was the guy, but that was a beautiful spinning back kick by Ricky Bandejas. That's what I was trying to allude to earlier, is that he needs to do things like that to get to give Pettis' respect. Pettis, a second degree black belt in Taekwondo, black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and a black belt in Rufus Sport kickboxing. Oh, Way to mix it right up, on man. cue with his own spin. Yeah, exactly. You got about a minute left, Rick, let's go. Into the last minute. You got a minute left. Bethany fades away, take that long. All day. Take it around. Yeah. Yeah. This is where I wanted him to fight. Yeah, he work. kept it long when he couldn't work. get to the length anymore. He basically got into the exchange and into the clinch here. Don't worry about hitting the fence. The fence. And now he doesn't need to force this takedown. He just needs to take down. I see. As I'm saying that, I'm like, you don't need to force it. You need to leave yourself exhausted. But that was a great that was a great job of getting the takedown. It was a nice job of getting the takedown right into side control, which is very effective. Not a lot that Sergio can do submission-wise from here. Good shoulder pressure by Ricky. He's trying to look for the opening so he can land elbows. This is a little bit of that new positioning um, stuff he's been working with ATT. You have Mike Brown, you've got King Mo. These are guys that have helped him progress in his game of getting the takedown, not just getting it, but then also getting the pass from that position. Final seconds of round one. Alright, both you guys kind of gave me a weird look when I Talk about the Anthony Pettis thing. Now, just for the record, Anthony Pettis is 5'10. Ricky Bandejas is 5'10. You said same body type, though. <laughs> you said same body type. Well, same length. Oh, now you're saying same length. Okay, we got it. 5'10, 5'10. Changed the argument after you already tried to make a point. Well, it worked that way. Checked it. <laughs> round two. Big John, who gets round one? You know, in my opinion, Sergio Pettis gets round one. I know that Ricky landed that takedown, and it was a beautiful positioning, but he didn't land anything off of it. There was no submission attempt, no strikes that really landed. Sergio got himself back to his feet, but he landed the better volume of strikes throughout the round, but it's a close round. It could go either way. Appreciate your guys' support. You guys are really great teammates. <laughs> it was when you said body type. That, that's what lost us. Long and lean. Long and lean. Okay, we'll go with that. There you go. Nice. Ricky coming with that backhand. See, those are things that people like Pet, like Sergio Pettis, don't normally deal with because he's dealing with guys that have a different type of a straight up kickboxing style. Don't get me wrong, they do flashy stuff that we've seen from the brother and from Mayo Sanchez. But Ricky needs to do things like that to kind of keep Sergio guessing. Bellator is back. It is great to be here inside Mohegan Sun Arena. We are live. This is our main event of the evening. Ricky Bandejas in the red gloves, Sergio Pettis in the blue gloves, Mike Goldberg, Josh Thompson, Big John McCarthy, Jay Glazer, Chael Sonnen, Shen Brown. This is round number two. The winner of this fight will fight the winner of the title fight between Archuleta and Mix at 135. Ricky's got that drop foot that we saw with Michael Chandler when he fought Brent Primus. Same type of thing. When he went to step back, his foot went limp on him. He wasn't able to get his base. You see him bouncing around like just like Michael Chandler did, trying to get some footing underneath him. That low calf kick, you see Sergio land three times in this round, and it has damaged that nerve where Ricky, at times, is having a problem controlling his foot. Happened to Henry Cejudo as well. It's Demetrius Johnson, absolutely. It's not that Ricky cannot work his way through it. Eventually, that nerve will start firing again, and he'll get that control back. But he can take an awkward step 
just normally moving because his foot's not going to be where it normally goes. Midway point of our main event of the evening. You got to go. But little things like that start affecting your mental though on what you think you can do. Is your foot going to give out? Now you're not focused on your opponent and you're focused on your leg. Just keep going. Keep that leg. 134 days since we were last with you. And it has been a wonderful time here tonight. Two minutes left. Here tonight with this main event, two weeks from now, Benson Henderson and Michael Chandler will fight again. Yes, good. Ricky now Gold, on top. Control. Ricky going for that takedown. Pettis doing a beautiful job of reversing it, coming out on top. See Ricky look to start to scoot. Just keep, I like how he's trying to keep Pettis' head down low. And, but he, and he's doing a good job of moving his hips, not allowing that leg to come over for that half guard position. Nice butterfly. It wasn't a sweep, but it was it enabled him to get back to his feet. And again, you look at that. That was that ended up being a takedown attempt by Ricky, but Pettis comes out on top, but no damage from it. Nothing really happened. So it's a change of position. It really doesn't have an impact on the fight. Our leader, Bellator President Scott Coker, talking about the rematch between Smooth Benson and Iron Mike two weeks from now. How do you see this one going? Let's respond to Scott Coker, and thank you, Scott Coker, for bringing us all back and doing it the right way, the safe way, the healthy way, and the proper way. Ricky needs to get down on some combinations. He needs to start setting his feet a little bit and throwing, because right now he's just throwing ones, ones and twos. He needs to start throwing threes and fours. Ricky, right now, you can see that he's in the fight, but he's not comfortable with some of the things that are occurring, and he cannot stop that low cap kick. It keeps on touching his leg. It's giving him a bit of a problem in landing power with his shots, too. Well, there's a lot of reason why he's not comfortable. Pettis is mixing it up very well. Pettis is mixing it up. He went from the push kick to the face, he went to the low level leg kick and the calf kick, and he came back up top with some combinations right to a Superman. When someone's mixing up the stuff, oh, so much. Big, big counter right hand by Sergio Pettis. That, and when it was the chin, John. That snapped yep. it back. Yep. Right back, right back. Ah. This is one of the things that happened. This is a position we're looking at where I saw, I see Ricky's head go back. I actually thought that Sergio had touched that chin when Not you can three. see he hasn't. That's the Let's type go. of thing that will happen with judges based upon their position in the fight. So that was good head movement. Good head Raising movement the by chin Ricky Bandejas. To get out of danger <laughs> by Ricky Bandejas. Still though, Big John scorecard has Pettis up two rounds. 10-9, 10-9. Yeah, the second round is much clearer a round for Sergio Pettis. There's no way that I think the judges could have gone with Ricky Bandejas in that round. Ricky needs to step up and be busier and, and go for more combinations in this round. Little tornado kick. Years ago, Duke Rufus told me that Sergio Pettis is a child prodigy, yeah. and he was the most knowledgeable and technical guy at age 21 that he had yeah. ever yeah. trained. Yeah. And you can still yeah. see the, the fundamentals yeah. and, and the sharp and yeah. succinct yeah. striking yeah. of Pettis yeah. is yeah. fun to watch. That was only five years ago, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he told me about 10 years ago uh, that he was. Uh, I saw him fight as an amateur at about 15 years old. Again, beautiful counter by Sergio Pettis. You saw it. Ricky reaching out. He's moving into it. Initiating the oh, offense. Oh, yeah. big nice right hand by Sergio Pettis. That one landed. Yep. Yep. Thank you very much, Josh. You're right, it did. Oh, I'm glad you have a monitor now to see what's going on. I'm, I'm watching the monitor now because I missed it on the one. I thought you had another oh, senior nice, citizen moment. Nice <laughs> I have a lot of those. All right, then go back downstairs. Hey, easy on the AARP members over here. <laughs> You'll get your card soon, trust me. Watch the check up. Just take the light. Keep right hand. And it, as you're watching the fight, what you're seeing is Ricky is he is competitive in the fight, but he's the one that's actually 
taking the shots. When they throw, the good shots right now are being landed by Sergio Pettis. They've got more snap to him, more power. Oh, God. But this is, a right. this is a respect thing. Forward. Right now, Sergio's just walking Ben Ayala's down. He's got to do something back. He's not throwing yes. enough to make Pettis respect him. I agree with you. You've got to do something to make him go, oh, I can't do that. Just landed that spinning back fist. As we reach the midway point of the third and final round. For all these young fighters that are just getting into this level of guys, of, of competition, I want you guys to remember this, is that right now, Ricky is very comfortable fighting in that orthodox position. But what happens now with the calf kick, it's forcing people to learn how to fight left-handed or the opposite of whatever they're comfortable with. You need to start realizing you need to fight on both directions. Otherwise, it's going to end up something looking like this. Good uppercut counter by Ricky Bandejas and then a nice stiff jab repeated by Sergio. Pettis looking to earn the 20th win of his professional career. He will turn 27 years old next month. I mean, at what moment, though, John, does Ricky just throw caution to the wind and say, hey, we're at a minute 30, minute 40 in the, in the third round. I've lost both rounds, possibly maybe one first, but I'm going to give it to Pettis as well. It's 2 nothing. You need to either throw caution to the wind and try and do something, or you're going to lose this fight regardless. Exactly. There comes a point, and I think that point is right now, he needs to start to say, hey, I got to start going forward and trying to create a situation where I can land a big shot, because you know he's got the power. He has put guys out with one shot. Well, against top-level competition, Sergio Pettis, guys, hasn't been stopped since 2015. But even if even if Bendejas was to try and get a takedown, it's going to take another a full minute to get past guard, to, to mount, to get some sort of submission attempt. I mean, it can happen in 10 seconds, but let's be realistic. Normally, it takes a good 30 seconds, 45 the way, seconds. The way it happens in 10 seconds is you hurt the person. You hurt them with a punch. They are now Like Sergio did. Absolutely. In his, in his debut against Alfred Kashakian, hurt him with a punch. Kashakian doesn't even have the brain power to know how to defend himself. And that's when the submissions quickly happen. The Donald Cerrone way. <laughs> nice spinning heel kick by Enrique Mendez. Good attempt. He's opening up, trying. This is where he should have been doing the whole fight this last 30 seconds, last 20 seconds. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit late, a little bit, yeah, not enough. I, I, I really know that Ricky is going to look back on this fight and understand there was areas where he could have done things a little bit more. They go the distance in our main event of the evening. The man who gets his arm raised. Watch Sergio here. It's the response to things. Beautiful takedown attempt by Bandejas, but he reverses it, comes out in the top position, and nullifies what Bandejas wants to do. Then it's the straight right hand. That landed cleanly. Bandejas is back, ready to go with him. Jab, he just systematically started breaking him down, and that calf kick caused a lot of problems. And at a certain point, we saw it was having a problem as far as controlling his foot, Josh, where there's nothing he could do. He's got to.
the distance, and tonight's main event will go to your three judges, Dave Peabody, Eric Colon, Dave Torelli. All three have it exactly the same at 30 to 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Sergio Pettis. Unanimous decision victory for Sergio Pettis. 2-0 in Bellator, his 20th professional victory. Let's get some final thoughts from Jay Glazer and Chael P. Sonny. Uh, thanks, Cole. It felt great tonight, didn't it, Chael? Just to be back here with the Bellator case here in 